Have you ever been emotionally shamed or manipulated into making a decision that you didn't want to make? Maybe make a sale, buy something you didn't want to buy, maybe make a decision you didn't want to make, or maybe make not make a decision that you actually wanted to make. Anyway, if you have these kinds of regrets because people emotionally manipulate you or shame you into doing or not doing certain things, in this video I'll show you how to never ever have that happen to you again forever. So I'll start off by telling a story that actually, a true story that happened to me when I was 18. I was in Hamburg in, Berlin, in Germany and I was in a street called Reeperbahn, which is sort of like the red lights district of Germany, kind of a big street filled with strip shows, uh, uh, brothels, cool restaurants and shows. And I was walking along in that street, I was on tour then, and I saw this kind of strip club place and I really wasn't very interested in going in. But, so I kind of went along, but then the guy at the entrance, the doorman, kind of told me like, hey dude, look, uh, come, come inside. And I was like, no, no thank you, no, I'm, I'm good, I don't want to spend any money there, I don't want to do anything, it's fine. And then he tells me, uh, look, it's completely fine. Uh, you can just sit down. Uh, you can just look at the girls, have a drink. If you don't want to pay for anything, that's completely fine. So I was like, okay, we well, you know what the hell, why not? And then I go into that place and then I sit down on the sofa and a girl comes up to me, starts talking to me and she's very flirty, very nice, you know, very, she kind of tries to create chemistry between us. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then she offers me a private lap dance in the back. So I tell her, look, look, I'm not, I'm not about that. I don't want to do this. Sorry, it's fine. And she says, no, no, it's, it's free. It's on me. I think you're an awesome guy. I just want to give you this gift. And again, I was 18, kind of stupid, but I believed her. I was like, oh yeah, makes sense. You know, of course, I'm an awesome guy. Of course you want to give me a free lap dance. So she takes me to the back and it's like a big round room. And I sit down with her and then maybe 10 seconds later, this other black, girl's, black girl comes in with a tray and a, a bottle on it of wine. And she asks me if I want some wine and I said no. And then what she does, she gives wine to, she, she pours wine to herself and to her friend and they start drinking wine and we kind of have fun, talk a bit and suddenly things get a bit sexual and I'm kind of weirded out because I haven't paid anything, this doesn't make any sort of sense. So I asked them like, hey girls, is any of this uh, cost me money? Like, does any of this cost money? And they ignored me and then I asked again, look, does any of this cost me money? They ignored me again. So I just stood up, I was like, look, do I need to pay for anything that's happening here? And the girls basically said, yeah, of course, you need to pay for the wine. It's uh, 12,000, 1200 uh, euros. And I was like, look, girls, I'm originally from Israel. We don't do that shit. Like this, maybe, maybe this works on Europeans, but you haven't met any Israelis probably. This, this won't work, sorry. So then the girl says, oh, look, you're going to have, we're going to have a problem then. And she goes out and gets this manager girl that comes in with a six foot five monster Hulk guy, super scary guy. And they both enter the room and now there's four of them. And they tell me, look, you have to pay. And I go, no, I don't. I didn't order the drink. I don't drink alcohol. You wouldn't find one drop of alcohol in me for the last more than six months. Uh, so sorry, I'm not paying anything. And then the tough guy came, you know, Mr. Frankenstein. And he's like, look, dude, you better fucking pay right now or there's going to be trouble. You know, it's going to end very bad for you. Of course, I was, I was really scared because I thought he's going to beat the shit out of me. And we kind of went back and forth and I basically kept stating the truth and just saying the facts of the situation. Look, I came in here, they told me it was free. Nobody said I need to pay for anything. They actually explicitly told me I don't need to pay for anything. 
I didn't ask for a bottle. She told me I can go in the back with her for free. I didn't drink. Not You can't charge me for anything. And they're like, no, but here's the bill. I'm like, yeah, but I didn't ask for anything. She said it was free. There's no reason I should pay for anything. And then he says, yeah, but the girls drank. Yeah, but I didn't order the drinks. I didn't ask for anything. And then this goes on and for a while and they try kind of all sorts of uh, scare tactics, intimidation. So finally, I simply ask them like, hey, look, uh, if I don't pay, are you going to beat me up? And the, the guy just says, look, uh, there's a police station three minutes from here. And if you don't pay, we're going to get the cops and then you're going to go to jail. And for me, that was like heaven because <laughs> I knew I wasn't guilty. And I knew they're probably that the police know they're crooks. So I was like, yeah, great. You know, I'm not willing to pay. I'm, I'm a thief. Sure. Call the cops, please. I beg of you, call them. And basically they started losing leverage and eventually I, I just realized that they're not going to do anything that, and that they don't have any leverage on me. I just got up, started walking away and then the manager ran to me. She's so like, no, no, no. Okay. At least pay for the girls. I was like, no, sorry. I'm not going to pay for shit. Got out of there, took a cab, split off. Now, the story is a, a lot more, um, I, I talk about it a lot more in my new book, the one I'm writing right now, but th that's basically the gist of it. And what actually happened there, it's like in a very extreme case of emotional manipulation, like when your mom tries to manipulate you into not doing something or a sales guy tries to pressure you into buying something. And I want to explain what happened. So the moment that I realized that they're trying to do emotional uh, pressure on me to make me basically buckle, make an emotional decision, I immediately resorted back to the facts and the truths of the situation. So that's step one. It's just whatever the truth of the situation, the facts, you just start saying them and repeating them over and over and over. Let's say, for example, some guy you had a business partnership with decides that you need to um maybe the business failed and he's like yeah so now you it's because of you so you owe me money and then he does some sort of you know pressure on you so you just tell him okay we went into business together we took the risk together the business failed and you're asking me to pay you the business and then you say again the, you we went into business together the business failed we took mutual agreements and then you asked me to pay you. Or let's say your mom is like, you know, oh, uh, you you need to do this right now because uh, you live here, so you have to do this. So you just repeat the facts. You're like, I live in this house and because I live in this house, that means I have to do what you say. I live in this house and because I live in this, you just repeat at like the most surface direct level of what's going on and the reason for that is because when people emotionally pander to you 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 always have this balance between being rational and being emotional so most of the time most people are fairly rational so when you're rational you act through your best interest and your brain can use all the, the data you've accumulated in your life to basically make the best decision for you but when you get emotional, let's say you're 50% emotional, that means that 50% of the logical brain is turned off. When somebody manages to get you, basically like in the cases where they tried to intimidate me, somebody gets me like 80, 90% emotional, then I know I'm bound to make a really, 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 really bad decision if I don't handle it really fast. Like, have you ever been in a some sort of an exchange or in, or you know sort of a debate and then after you kind of said something and then you thought look you looked back on it and your your brain was like oh you should have said this and you're like shit if i said that i would have been the winner or maybe you you're in an argument and then the, and then your brain after the argument your brain is like oh you could have done this you could have said this uh, you were right because of this and and literally it gives you the right answer You're like shit if I said that if I did that I would have obviously won So the reason that that's not an illusion by the way, so the reason that happened Is because once the event is over 
your brain's logical analytical capabilities come back because you become less emotional and once you reach a certain threshold basically the the, uh, the logical brain comes back and you you're automatically are going to act in your, in your best interest and if you argue with somebody who's emotional because when somebody tries to emotionally pressure you he has to act emotionally him on his own, himself uh, it's impossible to just pressure somebody with logic emotionally you have to become emotional yourself so if you can actually stay logical or return to logic then what's going to happen is you become more logical than the person who's emotional emotional because they're trying to emotionally pressure you so you actually are going to win the argument you're going to be faster and you're going to be more sharp uh, as you can see even four people try to extort me still when i became rational it was like 70 80 percent rational i was like shit get up walk away just do it now and i just did it and it worked and i had no doubt it will work because everybody was emotional and i wasn't i just had to make sure that nobody's going to beat me up so um so how did that work um again when you keep what when people try to get you emotional they the thing about emotions is that emotions are passing there's something that comes and goes so when you don't feed the emotions let's say you're angry you're sad depressed whatever it is when you don't feed the emotions anymore then it usually takes like what like 10 seconds half a minute maybe a minute for the emotion to start passing so these people know that they basically have to take advantage of you as fast as they can possibly do uh, because even if the emotion is very high it can't last forever uh, logic logic on the other hand is absolute it's infinite it doesn't have an ex, uh, an expiring date it, it just keeps being the right thing all the time so when somebody tries to pressure you and immediately you can feel your uh, logical mind uh, going down and the emotions going up maybe it's fear maybe it's excitement it could be even happy emotions that even that's not too good um, what you want to do is again keep talking about just the fact of the situation and the truth D don't say anything else just just whatever people ask you just say this is the fact this is the situation and just repeat it and it's easy to know even you can be as emotional as you want it doesn't matter if, if you're depressed in a suicidal manner because you're so depressed you can still be I'm laying in my room I'm very depressed I feel like shit that is the situation I'm very depressed I'm sitting in my room I'm thinking about my life and that I should kill myself I'm very depressed and just repeat it repeat it repeat it repeat it but the thing is you have to repeat you have to say it over and over and over again to not allow your brain to go along with the emotion because when you have an angry thought you're gonna to start to have angry an angry emotion you're gonna to start to have angry thoughts when you have a scared emotion you're gonna start having scared thoughts so by repeating your mantra which is basically the situation the, the truth of the situation you're both communicating with the other person and you're giving yourself a chance to start recovering from the emotion once the emotion subsides your analytical mind goes up once it goes up enough you'll have the right answer you'll feel confident bam you do it and then whatever you say or do you can be confident that it was your in your best interest so if you master this and really it just takes a certain degree of awareness or maybe you just had to be fucked in life enough to not have that happen to you again because now you'll implement this um, once you really 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 apply this 100% of the time you'll never ever have a situation again in your life where you did something and then you regret doing it the only things that you'll regret doing are things that you did from emotional decisions not from logical decisions because your logical decisions will always 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 be the right decisions at that moment because your brain is like a perfect analytical machine that always takes all the data and gives you the best possible solution it can't be wrong it's like a calculator but if you feed it with wrong data because you're emotional then you you can't blame the calculator uh, it, it's basically like doing one plus eight but holding down another number then you get like a weird result and that way people take advantage of you so just to summarize three things you should always always remember first thing is that when you get emotional when you start getting very very excited in the up zone or when you get in the in the scared down zones like like sad angry uh, uh, maybe uh, scared anxious never make decisions in these emotional zones because you're probably gonna 
regret them, no matter how good they look or how uh, scared you are and hopeless you are. Always uh, wait for the logic to come back and you do that by repeating the truths of the situation. Just the truths and the facts, that's it. Just repeat it like a mantra over and over again, either to the person or to you, or even if you're alone, just talk to yourself. It's, it's, it's the best thing you can do. And within a minute or two, you're gonna be logical again, at least logical enough to make a decision that's, you know, that's gonna be in your best interest. Um, second thing is that you never, again, never ever make a decision when you're not uh, uh, rational. Second thing is that you need to remember that other people don't necessarily have your best interest in mind. Remember that even somebody like your mom uh, doesn't necessarily want uh, the best for you. She wants the best uh, for you, but, but through her values. So what she values, you don't necessarily value. So there's going to be a conflict. So if you listen to her, you might take advice from her, but if you listen to her and just do what she says, then you, you're basically almost guaranteed to get the, the wrong kind of decision. Even your best friend often doesn't know to 100% what your values are at any given moment. So don't, um, don't let other people make decisions for you from an emotional standpoint ever, because again, they have their interest in mind. I'm not saying they're selfish. I'm not saying try to take advantage of you. I'm just saying they don't look at the world with the same data you have, because obviously you know yourself best, better than anybody else. Finally, always remember that the facts and truths of the situation are your, are your anchors. Facts and truths will always, always, always be emotions because the truth and facts are absolute. Logic is absolute, while emotions quickly come and go. So if you can stick in there and basically anchor yourself to the ground within the whole emotional storm by using the facts and the truths, you're guaranteed, guaranteed, 100% guaranteed to, uh, to win. Because if you don't make a decision until you get rational, which you have to get rational if you anchor yourself, then you will always win. And if it's a time-sensitive decision, oh, you have to decide right now or, or you know, where the opportunity is gonna go, fuck it, I don't want that opportunity. There's not a single opportunity in this life that's time sensitive where you know you have a very limited amount of time to make a decision where you won't end up regretting it and if you do win it's just going to be luck which luck is very bad in this world luck, luck is shit because luck makes you feel entitled it makes you think like oh this is because of me i'm special i make good decisions and, and then anyway you're gonna lose it later so i hope this helps you um basically this is my philosophy for never ever getting emotionally manipulated. It works perfectly. And this is just one of the many, many stories that I talk about in my book that I'm actually writing right now. I think I'll be done by the end of the month. Uh, the book is about my life journey and so far and all the things I went through in this life and what happened to me, you know, the various different lessons I learned. And I think it's gonna be an amazing read for you and you're gonna love it. Uh, but for now, I hope you just enjoy this video. Keep watching. I have three more videos to go today. And keep being awesome.